Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulillah. I begin with the name of Allah. All praise belongs to Allah. May peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad, for he is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. In the previous lesson, we talked about the four causes of minor ritual impurity, what's called hadith in Arabic. And the most notable one here in the Shafi school is when a man and woman touch skin to skin, and they're not relatives, they're not mahrams. Now, this is the most notable one because no other school says this. However, we showed you the proof. In the Quran, it says, literally, if a man and woman touch, they have to perform wudu before they pray. Now, when people hear this for the first time, especially beginner students, they get very apprehensive, especially if they're married. Because there's a sense that, oh no, touching my wife is a sin now. I'm not supposed to touch her. She's not supposed to touch me. I want to maintain my wudu as long as possible. And that's not the point of this ruling. When you're married, you're supposed to be at ease with each other. You're supposed to live a life of mutual enjoyment, of tranquility, in a lawful matrimony. That's the point of being married. So if you hear this and you get the sense that I'm not supposed to touch my wife, this is a misapplication of the ruling. That's not what this is about. Because think about it this way. When do you have to have wudu? When you're about to pray and when you're about to touch the mushaf. Otherwise, you don't have to have wudu all day long. So, if you touch your wife, if you hold her hand, if you give her a kiss, that's all perfectly fine. That's what marriage is about. Don't walk away thinking, I'm supposed to avoid touching my wife at all costs. Or if you're a woman, I'm supposed to avoid touching my husband at all costs. That's not what this is about. And if you still feel uneasy about this, realize that in other schools, this is not the case. In the Hanafi school, for example, if a man and woman touch, this does not break your wudu. They interpret that verse that talks about that very differently. They say it's a euphemism. In this verse, touching is a polite way of saying sexual intercourse. And so this is not talking about needing to do wudu. This is about needing to do ghusl. That's their interpretation. If you're in a situation where you have to maintain your wudu, Let's say you're traveling for hours and hours and there's no way you can perform wudu. There's no bathroom, there's no water. In that case, if you touch your wife, your wife touches you, you can take the Hanafi dispensation. And this is handy from time to time. When you go to Hajj, there's so many people. You're bumping into this one, you're bumping into that one. Chances are you may touch someone from the opposite gender. And if you're making tawaf, that's problematic. Remember, we said that one of the things you can't do when you don't have wudu is tawaf around the Kaaba. So if you are at Hajj, you can take the Hanafi dispensation. It's perfectly fine. You don't go to Hajj often, do you? No, once in a lifetime, maybe once every few years if you're lucky. So take the Hanafi dispensation. It's perfectly fine. Likewise, if you're living in a crowded city, you know, I grew up in New York City and you're bumping into people all the time. Let's say you're going to work, you have your wudu, you expect to have your wudu for the next few hours. And then, accidentally, you touch someone on the train. You don't even know who this person is, but it's someone from the opposite gender. You broke your wudu. Now you got to go to work and make your wudu again. It can get problematic. So, take the Hanafi dispensation. You don't have to feel bad about that. That's what the dispensations are there for. Now, to all these videos, we mentioned a few dispensations. Let's go through a few of them. So we said in the Shafi school, you can't perform wudu with water previously used for wudu. That's one of the first lessons we talked about. There is a dispensation. In the Maliki school, this is permissible. We also said that in the Shafi school, if an object touches a dog and there's a transfer of moisture, then this object must be washed seven times, one time with soil. And depending on your situation, this may be cumbersome. So there's a Maliki dispensation that says this is only recommended, but it's not obligatory. And this new ruling here. If a man and a woman touch skin to skin, this causes minor ritual impurity for both of them. Both of them have to perform wudu before they pray or they touch a mushaf. Now again, depending on your situation, this may be cumbersome as well. So the Hanafi say this does not cause minor ritual impurity. So you can take this dispensation from time to time. Now you'll notice that these are exceptions. These are not the norm. If you follow a madhab, you follow the madhab. 
But once in a while, there's going to be a situation that's going to be very difficult. And that's when you can revert to another school if need be. And it works both ways. You'll see that there's some rulings in other schools that are somewhat difficult. And so they will rely on the Shafi dispensation. For example, in the Hanafi school, when slaughtering an animal, the Bismillah must be uttered over it, saying Bismillah, and then they also add Allahu Akbar. This is obligatory in the Hanafi school. In the Shafi school, it's merely recommended. It's Sunnah. It's not obligatory. Again, the Shafi school is the most lenient when it comes to halal meat. Alhamdulillah. Likewise, in the Hanafi school, they say that sea animals other than fish are not edible. So lobsters, crabs, octopuses, these are not permissible to eat, only fish. And as we said in the Shafi school, as well as in the Maliki school, all sea animals are edible. This last point here is pretty interesting because uh, I remember one time I was in Istanbul, I believe, and I was with several students from South Africa, from the UK and other parts of the world. And some of us were Shafi and some of us were Hanafi. And we all went to a seafood restaurant and everybody said Bismillah and he started eating. One of the brothers stood up and he said, look at these folks, half of you are Hanafi. You walk into a seafood restaurant and all of a sudden you change your madhab. <laughs> what is this? You guys might as well call yourselves Shanafi. And everybody started laughing. So that's the nature of this. When people are educated in their religion, when you come across someone with a difference of opinion, as long as they have their proofs, as long as they have their evidences, Alhamdulillah, we can all coexist. La ilaha illallah. So I'm mentioning all of this because as a Shafi'i, you can take dispensations from other schools. And other schools, they can take dispensations from our school. It's perfectly fine. But this is usually an exception. Usually you learn your madhab and then you practice it to the best of your ability. But when situations become difficult, you can take dispensations. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yaman qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathira.